Hello. Welcome once again. In this video series, you learn how to develop wonderful games using Unreal Engine 5 and its blueprint visual scripting, from the single node to the most complex function. In the previous video, we discussed how you create game modes, and going to create our own player character and how to add custom inputs for our player to move up, down, left, and right. In this video, you created a project and an initial level using a first-person shooter template. You then set up a target object that reacts to the player's gunfire by changing its appearance. Finally, you set up a blueprint that will allow you to rapidly create moving targets. Please like this video if you find it helpful and informative, and subscribe to our channel for newer updates and game development tutorials. So let's start. Now we want to start adding our own objects to the level. The central panel you see in level editor is known as 3D viewport. The simplest kind of object that can be dragged into the game world in Unreal Engine 5 is called an actor. An actor is a basic object with no inherent behavior other than the ability to be rotated, moved, and scaled, but it can be expanded to include more complex behavior by attaching components. Our goal will be to create a simple target actor that will change color when shot with the included gun and projectile. We can create a simple actor by going to the modes panel. With the place tab selected, click on basic and then drag the object called box into the 3D viewport. This will create a new box actor and place it on our level. You should see the actor in the 3D viewport as well as in the scene outliner panel, where it will be named box by default. Right click on this object in the scene outliner panel, go to edit, and then select rename and then rename the box object to box target. Now we will get into the material editor and create a new material. This will be the color that will appear once the box target is hit by a projectile. So right click in the content folder and then select material. Name the newly created target red material. Double click it to open it. Now add a base color to the material and change the base color to red by doing so. Here we are, save it, close it. We now have a box in the world, and the material we would like to apply to the box when shot. The final piece of the interaction will be the game logic that evaluates that the box has been hit, and then changes the material on the box to our new red material. In order to create this behavior and add it to our box, we will have to create a blueprint. There are multiple ways of creating a blueprint, but to save a couple of steps, we can create the blueprint and directly attach it to the box we created in a single click. To do so, make sure you have the box target object selected in the scene outliner panel, and click on the blue blueprint, add script button at the top of the details panel. You will then see a path select window. For this project, we will be storing all our blueprints in the blueprints folder, inside the first person BP folder. Since this is the blueprint for our box target actor, leaving the name of the blueprint as the default, box target underscore blueprint, is appropriate. Box target underscore blueprint should now appear in your content browser inside the blueprints folder. We will now be looking at the viewport view of our box. From here, we can manipulate some of the default properties of our actor or add more components, each of which can contain its own logic to make the actor more complex. We will explore components more in the next chapter. For now, we want to create a simple blueprint attached to the actor directly. To do so, click on the tab labeled event graph above the viewport window. By default, the event graph opens with three unlinked event nodes that are currently unused. An event refers to some action in the game that acts as a trigger for a blueprint to do something. Most of the blueprints you will create follow the following structure. First is event, that refers to when. The second is conditionals, which refers to if. And third is actions, which is basically what to do. This can be worded again as, when something happens, check whether x, y, and z are true, and if so, do this sequence of actions. We want to trigger a change material action on our target every time a projectile hits it. While we could do this by utilizing the event actor begin overlap node, to detect when a projectile object was overlapping with the box mesh of our target, we will simplify things by detecting only when another actor has hit our target actor. Let's start with a clean slate, by clicking and dragging a selection box over all the default events and hitting the delete key on the keyboard to delete them. Detecting a hit to create a hit detection event, right click on empty graph space and type hit in the search box. The event hit node is what we are looking for, so select it when it appears in the search results. Event hit triggers actions every time another actor hits the actor controlled by this blueprint. 
Once you have the event hit node on the graph, you will notice that event hit has a number of multicolored output pins originating from it. The first thing to notice is the white triangle pin, which is in the top right corner of the node. This is the execution pin, which determines the next action to be taken in a sequence. Linking the execution pins of different nodes together enables the basic functionality of all blueprints. Now that we have the trigger, we need to find an activity that will enable us to change the material of an actor. Click and drag a wire from the execution pin to empty space to the right of the node. Dropping a wire into empty space like this will generate a search window, allowing you to create a node and attach it to the pin you are dragging from in a single operation. With context sensitive checked, type set material in the search box. The node we want to select is called set material, that is static mesh component. Now we will the swapping of a material. Once you have placed the set material node, you will notice that it is already connected via its input execution pin to the event hit node's output execution pin. This blueprint will now fire the set material action whenever the blueprint's actor hits another actor. However, we haven't yet set up the material. That will be called when the set material action is called. Without setting the material, the action will fire but not produce any observable effect on the box target. To set the material that will be called, click on the drop-down field labeled Select Asset underneath Material inside the Set Material node. In the Asset Finder window that appears, type red in the search box to find the target red material we created earlier. Clicking on this asset will attach it to the material field inside the Set Material node. We have now done everything we need with this blueprint to turn the target box red, but before the blueprint can be saved, it must be compiled. Compiling is the process used to convert the developer-friendly blueprint language into machine instructions that tell the computer what operations to perform. This is a hands-off process, so we don't need to concern ourselves with it, except to ensure that we always compile our blueprint scripts after we assemble them. Now that we have set up a basic gameplay interaction, it is wise to test the game to ensure that everything is happening the way we expect. Click on the play button, and a game window will appear directly above the blueprint editor. Try both shooting and running into the box target actor you created. Now let's see how we can improve the blueprint. So when we run the game, we see that the box target does change colors upon being hit by a projectile fired from the player's gun. This is the beginning of a framework of gameplay that can be used to get enemies to respond to the player's actions. However, you also might have noticed that the target box changes color even when the player runs into it directly. Remember that we wanted the box target to become red only when hit by a player projectile, and not because of any other object colliding with it. Unforeseen results like this are common whenever scripting is involved, and the best way to avoid them is to check your work by playing the game as you construct it as often as possible. To fix our blueprint so that the box target changes color only in response to a player projectile, return to the box target underscore blueprint tab and look at the event hit node again. The remaining output pins on the event hit node, are variables that store data about the event that can be passed to other nodes. The color of the pins represents the kind of data variable it passes. Blue pins pass objects, such as actors, whereas red pins contain a boolean, true or false, variable. You will learn more about these pin types as we get into more complicated blueprints. For now, we only need to concern ourselves with the blue output pin labeled other, which contains the data about which other actors performed, the hitting to fire this event. This will be useful in order for us, to ensure that the box target changes color only, when hit by a projectile fired from the player, rather than changing color because of any other actors that might bump into it. To ensure that, we are only triggering in response to a player projectile hit, click and drag a wire from the other output pin to empty space. In this search window, type projectile. You should see some results that look similar to the following screenshot. The node we are looking for is called cast to first person projectile. First person projectile is a blueprint included in Unreal Engine 5's first person template that controls the behavior of the projectiles that are fired from your gun. This node uses casting to ensure that the action attached to the execution pin of this node occurs, only if the actor hitting the box target matches the object, referenced by the casting node. When the node appears, you should already see a blue wire between the other output pin of the event hit node, and the object pin of the casting node. If not, you can generate it manually by clicking and dragging it from one pin to the other. You should also remove the connections between the event hit and set material node execution pins, so that the casting node can be linked between them. 
Removing a wire between two pins can be done by holding down the Alt key and clicking on a pin. Once you have linked the three nodes, the event graph should look like this. Now compile, save, and click on the play button again to test. This time, you should notice that the box target retains its default color when you walk up and touch it. Now fire the box, you will see the box does turn red when fired upon by your gun. Hope from this video, you will start to move into building in more advanced mechanics, in an easy to follow step by step approach, which will allow you to play around and build your own content, to eventually build your own game. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.